Good afternoon, Hard Cut Bully family, man. We, we back, man. We back with another live show. Today's show is on cow hawks and easty westy feet. Two easily recognizable flaws in American bully uh, uh, breeding. If you combine those with yesterday's show that we did on stiff stifles and bad temperament, you'll have four uh, uh, easily easy recognizable American bully flaws. This is part two of a part five series. I'm gonna give you diagrams and charts and try to explain this in detail so that you'll be able to recognize this easily, even in a pup. So stay tuned, man, check this out. All right, everybody, this is this first chart I'm gonna show you is gonna show you the correct angulation and it's gonna show you three other variations of it. Uh, the last of which, you can see on this chart, the last of which is the cowhawk where the shank is coming in at the, kinda like the ankles are pointing in. Uh, I don't know what we call that in uh, regular life. But this is not just in American bullies. This is in um, horses, cows, everything. That's why they call it cow um, But you can see the first one is the way the correct dog should look. The correct angulation. And he doesn't have stiff stifles anyway. You can go back and check the old show about on that. But the first one you can see that's correct. The second one is a little narrow because you can see the outside of the bodies of the, the outside of the the body and you can see the, the, the legs are a little bit inside of that the other one is reversed the, it's bold on the outside you should be able to see that easy and the last one is the cowhawk this um this this diagram came from i think this is raging bulls kennel but it's a pretty good little diagram uh but this last one is what a cowhawk is you can see that you should be able to see that easy um I'll show you another chart here. This other chart is of a German Shepherd. And you can see the straight normal. And then the second one is the Cowhawk German Shepherd. And the second one is the, is the wide, or Brandy Wide, what they call it. So you can see Cowhawk is not some just in American Bullies. This is in all of the breeds. And I, so we just went from American Bully to German Shepherd and they even have diagram charts of this. Trying to keep their breeders, you know, updating and keep the breed pure. That's what they're doing. That's what we're doing. So anyway, you can see that on that chart. That's real uh, self-explanatory. And I'm gonna give you one more. This is of a, of a, I think this is of a horse. And you can see they got straight lines drew, straight from the shank, straight to the hoof, straight down. Uh, he's got angulation, but you can see on that second one, you can see how the, the whole knee part would be inside of the lines so they can that's an easy way for you to identify that now you can identify this in a puppy if you're not there to get to the litter have them send you some pictures of it for one watch the puppy's walk his gait his, his movement and you can see if anything is out of place anything popping out to the side anything you already know it's kind of a red flag because it's kind of hard to get pictures on a puppy so you might not get to see the back end like you want so First of all, just watch the movement of it. But if you get to see the back end, now you can easily be able to recognize cow and stiff stifle and uh, easty westy feet. We'll go on to easty westy feet later on this, in, the, in this video. You can only have two flaws in breeding. If you're gonna breed any kind of, of uh, animal, period, you can only have two flaws if you're gonna be the breed stock of that particular breed, uh, breed or pedigree. So you cannot have more than two flaws. Uh, it's okay if you got one flaw because you can go in to another dog and try to do the math and get this worked out sooner or later. But two flaws is too much to start with. Over two flaws is too much to start with in breeding. It's very hard to find two or less. In, in most cases, you know, I would say maybe you got a couple show dogs in the litter. If it's a, you know, good breeding, you probably have a couple show dogs in there and you might have a couple breed stock and the rest are gonna be uh, pet quality. Uh, so if you know these little things to look for, you'll be able to see what you're paying for. You don't wanna pay, I'm trying to keep you from paying show quality costs for a pet quality dog. I want you to pay pets for pet and start a new subscribers, man. If you ain't a subscriber yet, come on off the bench for the big win, man. Do you understand what I'm saying when I say that? I'm saying that I'm building a team of bench warmers, man. People that was on the bench that didn't know what to do. And I'm giving you the information to make you a winner, man. 
So come on off the bench for the big win, man. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Hit the share button to share this content. It's on. Easty Westy Feet is the second flaw we're going to do today. It's another easily recognizable trait. Uh, Easty Westy means one going east, one going west as far as the front paws. This way. They should be going this way, but they're going this way. I'll give you some examples. I got uh, Trial Roxy, and let me show you a little bit of her, and you can see she's very bow-legged and she's Easty West. This is the first bully that I bought. I did buy her as a pet, I mean, at a pet price, so I can't really complain, but you can see she has the Easty Westy feet. But the thing about her is she's exotic, so it's not as big of a deal. But when you get into the classes, pocket, classic, standard, XL, you don't want Easty Westy feet in her. Uh, I'll show you, here's a shot of Mr. Miyagi, and you can see, uh, for one, he's got a kink tail. Um, in some pictures, he'll kind of look like he's East to West a little, and then some pictures, he's out of automatically straight, so you just, with him, you just don't know. But my point is, in exotic breeding, there's a little bit more leeway, it's exotic, to get what, what they're trying to get out of exotic. You gotta do a bunch of stuff. So, but in the regular classes, you don't want Easty Westy feet. So if you're going to buy a pocket, you don't want Easty Westy feet. There are certain um, uh, bloodlines that have a lot of that in there. Uh, Gooch bloodline has a lot of Easty Westy in there. My dog Tra Roxy has a lot of Gooch in her pedigree. Uh, so a lot of that comes in there. And what I find is a lot of times when it's a tri-colored dog or anything with a lot of color, It'll have some Easty West in it. And a little bit is okay. I would say up to 45 is okay. But after it gets here, that's that's not what you want. All right, so let's look at the notorious Juan Gotti. One of my favorites. Oh, the, the, the breed goes back to this. This is where we started at in the late 80s, early 90s. This is where we started from. So you can see on Gotti, uh, we don't have a lot of pictures of the back end of him, but you can see his angulations is good. Um, He's, he's, he's stout, he's right. You can see this dog is light on his feet with all that muscle he's got. All right, so I'll show you another picture. This picture here is of, of King Creed. It's one of my dogs, a standard American bully. All right, and you can see he's, standard American bully, it, the tops is 20 inches, so he's right at the edge of standard American bully. He's going into the XL. We want him to stay standard. He's about 11 months. But you can see his shank, and you can see that nothing is coming in on any picture nothing comes in everything he still has the right stance and i'm not posing him he's just this is how he stands because this is how he's put together so that's what you want from a good bully it doesn't matter the look i mean the uh the color if you get a good bully with good structure you're gonna be impressed why am i telling you this i'm telling you this so that you'll be more prepared and get the better pup from the litter every time and we start to weed out the bag. Uh, most breeds need to be established a good 100 years, man. This thing is started in the late 80s, early 90s. So this is all the foundations. If we do sloppy stuff, it won't last. My partner came over last night, showed me a, a picture of one of, the, uh, of one of his homeboy's dogs. He spent $10,000 on, and it was a red tri, uh, tri-colored bully, which is like a like a Rockweller color, but red, got the little dots over his eyes. So he showed me this picture and this dude, it's a nice, it's about a year old now. I seen it when it was a pup, and now I'm seeing it as a year old. And it's still a nice dog, but it's nothing that I could breed with. I don't know what I could use out of this dog to breed with. But if you were looking for color and the type of look and everything, you got that. I don't, but it wasn't worth $10,000, I'm just gonna say. It. It ain't, that, ain't, that wasn't worth $10,000. Loose skin, you're not supposed to have loose skin. You're not supposed to have long hair, you know. So what I'm saying is there are very good pets in this situation. It's just the breed stock needs to be more uniform than that so that we can make a more uniform product. Anyway, man, if you ain't did it yet, subscribe to the channel, man. Come on off the bench for the big win, man. We, we're growing by leaps and bounds, man. I got me a dream to be the Shorts King, man, and I'm doing it, man. I'm real close to my, my dream getting accomplished, man. I need your help. Come on in. Subscribe to the channel. If you're a subscriber, I need you to play the long content, man. Make the algorithm work so that keep me around. That keep pushing me out, man. Let this information go. So, uh, anyway, man, if you ain't did it yet, sub.
something hard cut, man. Something.